We're back with expert antiques appraiser Dr. Lori to look at a few more items sent in by you. And we are starting with a teapot sent in from Lena. So Dr. Lori, tell us about this teapot. This is a lovely teapot for many reasons. Um, first of all, it's pewter, and a lot of people are starting a revival of collecting pewter. It was very popular in the 1970s and, of course, in the colonial period. But uh, pewter, very, very nice. And this is a nice example. I like the molded shape of the spout. I like the bell shape of the actual um, lid, which is hinged and attached. And, of course, the embossed work of the body. It is a late 1800s piece. So dates to between 1880 and about 1900, and uh, it is clearly marked. It's only the teapot. I was not told that there was any other pieces in a tea set. So just the teapot is what you're guessing in terms of value. When did you say, what, what time frame? Uh, 1880s to about 1900. And where was it made and who was it made by? England, I believe it's English. Um, and I do not think there were maker's marks on it. Uh, oftentimes there would be an embossed hallmark uh, often if it were in silver or silver plated, but in this particular case, we didn't have a hallmark, but I think it's English. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't know. Mm. Pewter. I don't know why. <laughs> I just feel like, would that make the tea taste differently? Well, metal, metal teapots do have sort of that, you know, you do, sometimes people do recognize a taste. If your I, taste buds are very good, you might recognize a little bit of a metallic. I have excellent taste buds. Um, okay, you I'm sure you do. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> she know. does. I don't know why that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way you proclaimed it. I have excellent taste buds. <laughs> okay, go <laughs> ahead. Other excellent things. <laughs> All right, I'm afraid I'm going too low. Every one today, but I, I went 115 on this, Dr. Lori. I said 175. $150 is what it's worth. You guys are getting close, oh, though. You guys are close oh, on all of these. Okay, so you get the point. That's you're right. Closer. All That's right. right. All right, we have a right, bowl from ahead. Sally. Okay, this is a Pyrex bowl. A lot of you might recognize these. Mm -hmm. This is the blue, of course, uh, butter print, print bowl. Uh, these, of course, are very, very popular Pyrex. I mean, I use Pyrex in my kitchen all the time. I like Pyrex a lot. Um, and every and others do as well. A great, of course, American brand. And this Pyrex bowl is rare because of its color. Hmm. I was going to say the color stands out, and also like the the drawings or whatever the etchings on the outside. It it's, makes me think sort of mid-century modern. Am I in the right zone here, Dr. Lord? You're in the zone, David Highfield. You okay. are in the zone. Is okay. what you're in. Yes, the zone. <laughs> All right. Well, because yep, of that. Mid-century modern. I think it could be worth a lot, Heather. Go ahead. You might want to go really Try your high. luck. Try your luck, David. <laughs> Try your luck against her taste buds. I Try. I know. <laughs> well, it's hard to taste Pyrex. Um, okay. Are you going to gonna go first? I said it to $35. I went higher than that. I went $80 because that Pyrex, that's a very unique color. 75 bucks. Wow. Oh, yeah, David. Dr. Lord. He did try his yeah. luck. <laughs> Look at me. Eating right. my words. Last year, we have an iron from Stephanie. So tell us about this iron. This is a Czechoslovakian based uh, iron, and basically, it's for steaming clothes. These irons were very typical in the early years of the 20th century. This iron looks like it has been cleaned up, sparkling, very, very beautiful. Um, and, or the way the lights hitting it with the photograph could be that too. But it's, I think it was utilized in the early 20th century. And then I think they cleaned it up and put it on a shelf and nobody touched it for, you know, 100 years, I don't know, 80 years. But it's a nice condition and very typical of the time period. It would be for someone who professionally would press clothes so or press linen. So usually it would be for someone whose job it was to keep other people's clothes, linens, or um, textiles nice and pressed. Is this something that like people would collect the way we've talked about people collecting typewriters or plates or something like that? Yes, yes. Teapots, typewriters, plates, mm -hmm. irons. Uh, I, you know, I've been in appraisal uh, where it was all toasters, vintage toasters. I can just see that whole warehouse of toasters, these people. Some people are big collectors of one particular thing. So yes, that's possible. I think okay. this family actually had a tradition of being in this service industry. So they had the iron. I see. Might have been grandma's. Okay, what did yeah. you say? I might have gone too low again. I said $70. I said 85. $150. Oh, okay, I did go too low. And Heather Woo! wins. That's fantastic. Another successful week, Dr. Lori. <laughs>
taste buds. That's what it is, Heather. It's those taste buds. They're helping you win. Thanks, Dr. Thanks, Dr. Laurie. Dr. Laurie. We'll see you next week. <laughs> And thanks to every one of you for sending us your photos. You can email yours to Dr. Lori at PTL at KDKA.com. And who knows, maybe yours will be chosen for a future episode with Dr. Lori.